Modifying a 5 inch gauge Great Western Railway 14XX steam locomotive. This is part 7, lamp brackets and the reversing mechanism. First of all I went up to Blackgates Engineering and bought a couple of these. These are Great Western Railway lamps for a 5 inch gauge locomotive. They are very fine scale, beautifully cast, but unfortunately these fine scale lamps, because I did buy two of them, don't fit on the brackets, because the brackets are miles over scale. And furthermore, and somewhat surprisingly, these brackets are just pushed into holes on the running boards. So I removed one of the brackets completely and modified it. So I suppose it was a bonus that these brackets parted company with the running boards so easily. The first job that I did using the one inch belt sander was to reprofile the bracket so it fitted into the lamp. And here I'm drilling out the fake bolts that are in the top of it. These lamp brackets, like a lot of things on the engine, are really well produced lost wax castings. But it's no good just having these pushed into holes on the running board because when I put the lamp on them, the first thing that's going to happen is the lamp's going to fall off complete with the bracket and will be lost forever. In this video I'm only showing the modification of one of the brackets. I may modify some more but there's no rush to do that. There are really two schools of thought on this. If you make the brackets super scale then they look really nice. But with any fine detail there's always a bit of a trade off. Because I've had to thin this bracket out on the one inch belt sander it's now weaker than the rest of the brackets. So therefore, when cleaning around the engine, if I catch it, it will probably break off, whereas the other ones are a little bit thicker and a little bit stronger. But as the other brackets are just pushed into holes in the running boards, they would drop off anyway. There is enough material on the lugs that locate on the running boards to rivet them over during manufacture, but this wasn't done for whatever reason. And there's definitely a problem with this particular bracket, because the shaft that sticks out of the bottom of the bracket that goes into the running board can't go into the running board because the footstep is mounted immediately underneath it. After thoroughly degreasing the lamp brackets and cleaning out the holes in the running boards, I secured them using some Loctite 603, and the lamp brackets were temporarily held in place with a spring clamp until the Loctite cured. In this clip you may also notice that the bolts that hold the footstep to the running board are not exactly scale in appearance. I think the use of modern posi-drive screws on a model of this type is a terrible idea. I'm not sure whether this Loctite principle is going to work in this case, but if it doesn't, I'll do it the hard way. I'll just make some new lamp brackets, a whole full set of them. Please note, this is not a King Scale or Silvercrest model locomotive. This engine was bought directly from the manufacturer in China. In this clip, I'm mounting the modified lamp bracket to the running board using a couple of 8BA bolts. And yes, I know that the 8BA bolts are a little bit bigger than the ones that are cast in on the lost wax castings, but they're going to be stronger. You will also notice that I'm mounting this modified lamp bracket very close to the toolbox and the splasher on the running board. The splasher is the curved green bit, and it's really a mudguard that stops all the rubbish from the wheel from splashing all over the boiler. Anyway, the reason for putting this bracket where I have done is that the splasher and the toolbox provide a little bit of protection and may help prevent the lamp and the bracket from being ripped off the running board by catching it with a cloth when cleaning the engine after a run. In this clip you can see how much thinner the modified bracket is than the other two. Here's a top tip. It's not a particularly good or clever top tip, but here it is anyway. When using very small bolts on models, often you have to use the bolt longer than you need it to engage the nut on the end of it. Then the bolt is too long. So the best thing to do is just snap it off with a pair of pliers like this. Not brilliant engineering, I know, but it does the job. If the broken part of the bolt was visible, if you had it the other way up, you could always clean it up with a needle file. Some viewers may be thinking, well, why didn't I just thread the running boards and bolt through into the threaded running board? From experience, I don't like to do that because the bolts go rusty and if ever I want to take off the lamp brackets, for whatever reason, maybe one gets broken, I don't know, it would not be good if the bolts sheared off because the bottom part of the bolts were stuck into the running board. So that's why I do it this way. By physically handling these brackets, you can see how much paint came off them. So now it's time to touch them in with a paintbrush. This is the first coat. After another coat of touch-up paint after this coat's dried, they will look good. 
Moving on now to more important things. If you saw the last episode in this series, you will know that the reach rod didn't move far enough back to put the engine fully into reverse. So what I'm doing here is just checking how much further back I can actually move the reach rod. And it's not much. I looked at some potential solutions in the last episode. One of the suggestions was to take the reach rod off and drill another hole in it, but that's too close to the first hole, so that's out of the question, as is any other physical movement of the reverser or the tank. What I did notice with this screw reverser is the anomaly of the fact that the block is square, but the edge of the frame is rounded. And in this clip, you can see exactly what I mean. Plus, I don't like the look of this big ugly square block, so I think the thing to do is to profile the block so that the edges of the block match the shape of the frame. Like an idiot, I took the handle off completely and I thought, oh no, just a minute, I need to unscrew this thread. It'll be much easier with the handle on. Notice that this is a left-hand thread, it's the opposite way to a normal screw thread. When Phil and I first looked at this engine, it looked like there was a single point screw just going into the threads, but we were wrong. This is beautifully engineered, and it's a phosphor bronze block as well, it's not brass. And the fit is perfect, it's not too tight, it's not too slack. So what went wrong with the design and the basic thought process that puts a perfectly square block onto a carriage that has rounded edges? I don't know. So what's the fix? Should I get my needle file out and file the edges square? No, because the round edges are good for strength. I just carefully shape the edges of the block. So now this phosphor bronze die block slides up and down the carriage and it goes all the way at both ends. Time to test it. The other problem mechanically with the die block being square and the carriage being rounded is as the block got to the end it started to ride upwards and it started to bind and feel a bit nasty. Now it feels really swish and very smooth all the way down. Except the block doesn't need to go quite as far forward as this. That's pushing the reach rod a little bit too hard. But because the block isn't square, it doesn't have the binding on the end of the carriage problem. And as you can see when I turn the handle to reverse the engine, the die block goes all the way to the end of the carriage. So how do I stop this die block from moving too far forward? Well that's quite simple, I just make a spacer. And here it is. It's just the right thickness to stop the die block from going fully to the front. If the travel of the die block is any more than this in the forward direction, the reach rod puts too much pressure on the valve gear in forward gear and it's not necessary. The engine is still not perfect in reverse, but now it's reversing like it did when the reach rod was just hanging loose from the top of the turret. For me now, the reversing mechanism just feels so much better. It's much easier to operate. It was very notchy and very sticky before, but now it moves very smoothly both ways. That's it for this episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.